Simple greetings and welcome back to the channel. This will be kind of a short one today because I'm still trying to get back in the swing of things and I've got a lot going on. But what we're going to do today is we're going to pop up VirtualBox and I'm going to show you the fairly straightforward way to upgrade your kernel. If you're running the mainline Linux Mint version, the Ubuntu based version, you should easily be able to upgrade your kernel to the latest hardware enablement kernel available through Ubuntu. Now, since we are based on fetch here. And as you can see, we're in VirtualBox um, on the lovely ThinkPad L14 iPad with a new keyboard video coming uh, eventually. But we're on Mint 22.1, which we're based on Ubuntu 2404. And you can see we are running the 6.8 kernel because that's what Ubuntu 2404 shipped with. Now, you can continue to run this kernel throughout the Mint 22 lifespan. Um, I'm assuming eventually they'll bump you up to the next supported kernel, but for now, you can just use what comes stock. But if you're like me, and while you don't want to run Bleeding Edge, once you've tested enough, you're willing to move to the latest hardware enablement, it's pretty simple. If you don't have a little icon down here. You can just pull up the software update manager by just going to update manager. And in this case, this VM has some amount of updates. None of these should affect what we're going to do, but what I will do is I'll go ahead and install these updates because that's what you should do. And if there's any kernel updates, you should reboot. Just doing Firefox and a few other base packages this will be fine. This won't cause any issues or anything. Now, it might take a moment of connection, although usually Firefox does just take forever. I don't know what's with the package. Maybe it's just big. Even on my Starlink internet, it still seems to take a moment to download. Same with Thunderbird. Although I've, I've largely found mirrors that work pretty well in my area, so not really an issue. Um, for now, I guess I will pause the video, and when these updates are done, we'll come back and go on the kernel upgrade. Okay, so we've finished updates. You can go even now, either if the update menu has disappeared because there were flat packs or something, you can go and reopen it again. I'm going to go in here to the Linux kernels. You can actually even see your history of updates if you're that much of a nerd. I'm going to go Linux kernels. Now, you're going to get this screen. I usually say, I understand. Um, if you mess with kernels, because it's the actual driver stack, you can cause a lot of problems. It's worth noting. This is why I hold out on, on major kernel jumps like this. Kernel updates itself, typically pretty safe. I'm going to say continue. It's a little bigger for myself. And so right now, we are running the 6.8 kernel, the 6.8.57. Now, 6.11 was released earlier this year, and it's the next hardware enablement. Now, you'll see this one says supported until April 2029. That's because 6.8 specifically uh, will have support until that point. That's why I'm saying you can keep running these through the end of the distribution life cycle. You'll get patches for the next several years. However, if you do need or want the newer hardware enablement, at some point Mint will just ship 6.11, but if you're like me, you want to use it sooner, you can come in here and choose the 6.11 kernel. And you can queue installation. 
or you can just hit install. IQ installation, because if there's multiple you want, uh, these are the only kernels that I see. If you are from an older upgrade, say from the actual machine, you will actually see multiple. So I had my living room media center actually show me the 515 kernel because that machine was originally on Net21, which would have shipped the 515 kernel originally. It just had leftovers and it left in the area. It's never a terrible idea once in a while, even though I automate the update manager removing obsolete kernels. Sometimes kernels don't get removed. So when you go through a major upgrade cycle or I'd say every six months, pop in here and see if you've got a bunch of different kernels installed. Like as an example, this virtual machine hasn't been used a lot. So 6851 was installed, 68051 was installed. If I had like four kernels before that installed, I would just queue those other ones. I usually keep the rule of three, have three kernels, have your current kernel, have one back and one back from that. Um, if your distribution uh, moves to the newer kernel or whatnot, like I'm going to move to the 6.11, I will remove the 6.8 kernel once I've proven the 6.11 kernel is fine. Just because you remove the kernel doesn't mean you can't come back in here later and re-add it if you want to. That's kind of neat. Um, but your system will always boot off the newest kernel. So we've queued... Oh, and as a note, you cannot remove an kernel. So I'm currently booted into the 68057. I can't remove it. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to queue the removal of this one that's installed, because I'm already here. We're going to leave the current booted kernel as an option, and we will queue this kernel to install. If we say perform queued actions, it will say, ah, this is what you asked me to do. I'm going to say apply. It's going to say, yep, I'm going to remove all these things. I'm going to, which is the 6.8 kernel I asked for removed, and I'm going to install the 6.11 headers, which is required. And you're going to type in your secret secret password. It's definitely not 1, 2, 3. And now it's going to download and install those headers. Now this will take a few minutes, but it doesn't usually take too long. It's no different than installing a kernel update. So, and you see now it's removing, and you can even the details if you want to. We're now unpacking the 611 headers. And then it will download and install the 6.11 kernel as well. There it is, unpacking 6.11.21 generic. I know for a fact this kernel jump will require an update to the kernel again. Uh, just because just I just did it the other day, which is fine. Yeah, there's some DKMS for uh, VirtualBox drivers. If you had an NVIDIA drivers or something, it would need to recompile those DKMS modules as well. There's the building for VirtualBox Guest Editions. And it is worth noting, if you are like me, you do use software that relies on kernel modules, you might want to go make sure the newer kernel is not going to cause problems with your software. 6.11 seems to work with VirtualBox 7 here, so that's what I'm going to stick with. Um, later this week, I am going to play with 7.1 because that's the QT version of VirtualBox. So it's worth testing to see if the QV6 version messes everything up. And as you can see, we now have that kernel installed. I can't remove the old 6.8 kernel. I wouldn't recommend it anyway. And so what we're going to do, we're going to close. We're going to close. And then we're just going to reboot the system. So right now, we are rename A. 6.8. I will restart.
and we rebooted successfully. Three. And I just have this welcome set on startup. Just close that. A. And you can see we are on 6.11. And VirtualBox is still working. That's that's good. So now, if per se, and you can see we've got a 6.11 kernel update. For whatever reason, it doesn't ship the latest version. I don't know. Probably a, a bug in the code somewhere. Or maybe it's intentional. But we'll get a kernel update. No big deal. It won't even ask us to reboot. Um, you'll have to reboot to get that update. Go back here into kernels, and we say continue. We could then go in cue the removal of the 6.8 kernel. Let's say it's been a couple weeks. I'm happy with the 6.11 kernel. I don't need 6.8. As it is, I would continue to install updates for the 6.8 kernel, and that's not a bad thing. What I do recommend, if you move to a new, newer kernel, and you don't need the older kernel, to just go ahead and remove it so it's not taking up extra space uh, in your boot directory, because that's where it stores the kernels. And we'll see the form key actions. We're going to remove the 6.8 kernel, which means we're going to remove all those headers. And that, boys and girls, is pretty much how hard it is to upgrade your kernel on Linux Mint, specifically the version based upon Ubuntu. Now, LMDE does not have this tool. It would be a manual operation from backports. Um, I might do a video on that at some point, uh, but that's not really in the scope of today. So if you do like the video, go ahead and like the video. I'm hoping to get a few more videos up here in the coming weeks, so stay tuned. But for now, y'all take care.